So our big question that we distilled it down to when the project got off the ground in our district and, and similar to what, what Karen did in, in hers, was what does learning look like when questions and ideas become the central focus of learning? And the reality is we already know that. Um, just looking at this, right? It's about all the idea of improvement that's happened in humanity <coughs> from the beginning of time. You know, your Model T's up to your Porsche. There's nothing in this room that exists today as it did 10 or 15 years ago, let alone 100 years ago. So we know what that learning, that authentic curiosity looks like as we move through life. Um, this piece here is what, just a little motivational piece for us. We look at um, a classroom experience. This is a geography class in the school that I worked at. A group of grade nine boys were sitting around looking at populations and they were asking a question, what should governments be allowed to do to lower populations? And the teacher said he watched the boys work and he said one of the boys got a little nervous and said, well, that's a hard question. I don't think I can answer it. Let's make it easier. So they went to what are governments doing to lower populations? They went, they Googled it, and away they went with their assignment. At the end of the assignment, the teacher took them through a reflective process and the kids came up and said, you know, a good question is one that doesn't have a right answer. It allows us to look and think further. And the kids came up with the idea, a good question is not Googleable, right? And I thought it was beautiful that grade nine applied level boys came up with that idea of what a good question is and started to understand their own learning in terms of driving their own personal authentic curiosity. 